I'm, I'm mentioning that, that you had to break out hold because of the material impact this particular quarter. Talk to me about the fact that I guess the House doesn't always win. Well, you know, we noted this in the call. We had about a $25 million swing from hold in Q3, another $25 million in October. Um, I actually think that's a good thing. It's absolutely unrelated in, in any way to the fundamentals of the business, but it's great for all these new customers coming on to be winning, and I think that bodes well for, for the long-term prospects of retaining those customers and making them loyal. So I actually like when the book doesn't do as well early in the season. I'd much rather do better later in the season and not early in the season. Uh, okay, so if hold was a factor, um, does that mean that the the – bookies need to do a better job in figuring out odds? Is there any kind of formula that is going to have an overhaul? No, it's nothing to do with that. I mean, I think that there's randomness in game outcomes. We only had three weeks of NFL in September. Um, you know, favorites won at a really high rate. And typically when the favorites win and the, and the overs hit, which is what happened, then the, you know, the, the sports books don't do as well and the customers do great. And we saw the exact opposite the last weekend of October. We had a positive variance of $25 million between Thursday and Monday. And, um, you know, that's just the nature of the business, especially in a sport like NFL where there's only one set of games a week, a couple extra primetime games. There's going to be variance. Okay, let me ask you about this Entain deal. The $22 billion bid came to nothing. Was this really about establishing an international footprint or is there something about Entain's tech that was particularly attractive to DraftKings? No, it was much more the former. I think, you know, when we've talked about our M&A strategy, we've said that our vectors for expansion are continuing to gain share and do well in our core markets in the U.S., um, global and then product expansion. So we're going to always look at things that could potentially help with that. Um, we don't end up doing the vast majority of the deals that we look at. This one was unique because due to the UK takeover code, we uh, and Entain had to be public that there was a discussion happening. But it was very early on. Um, and, you know, it was entirely about global expansion for us. I look at it and say, well, the U.S. is an incredibly exciting market now. It's going to be the biggest market in the world for online gaming. I think most large tech companies, really all large tech companies, have some sort of global footprint. So whether that has to be now or in the future, we'll see. But at some point, we want to be global. Jason, um, you did see a, a gain in average revenue per user. Um, as your revenues have gone up, uh, your, your sales and marketing pretty much tracks with it. In other words, you seem not to be running things for operating leverage right now at these, uh, at these levels of users uh, and engagement. Uh, when does that change? I mean, how, how has, has your assessment of the total addressable market changed? And take, you know, $50, 50 a month in, in average revenue per user. I just wonder how many people there are out there uh, who, who would basically buy into that. Well, I think right now we're at the very early innings of the industry. I mean, the company's revenue is almost doubling year over year per our latest guidance. We're still live in states that on average have been live only a little over a year, and uh, I think about a year and a half. Um, still most of the population left to legalize, and we're talking about a TAM that could be $60 billion plus if there were full legalization. So I think at this stage it totally makes sense to invest. We've been very consistent in saying that we look at a two- to three-year payback on new states. So far the one state that's reached that threshold, New Jersey, we talked about earlier this year, did reach profitability. All of our other states are on that uh, lower end or below the two-year mark. So we're still in the investment phase. We just launched several new states, including Wyoming and Arizona, only in the last couple of months. And I think it's a very exciting time. And now is absolutely the time to be investing and bringing on new customers and growing the top line. And we're looking for a New York State Gaming Commission hearing on Monday that we anticipate may announce the recipients of an online sports betting license. So we'll be looking for that. In the meantime, you know, Jason, I was at the Global Gaming Expo in Las Vegas and multiple people, competitors of yours, but people who know you said, you know, Jason Robbins wants to be Jeff Bezos. You've come a long way since fantasy sports. You've got NFTs and drive by DraftKings for investing and ticketing and 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 I just want to know, is that where you're heading, global domination? Well, I think we have ambitions to be a much bigger company than we are today. Um, you know, we want to expand geographically. We want to expand into new product lines. I think we have a proven track record of being able to do that, mostly organically. 
Um, and I think that really what we're trying to build is much larger than sports betting or DFS or iGaming. We want to be a big tech company. We want to be in the same conversation with companies like Amazon and, uh, and the like. So, you know, that is where we're trying to head. Uh, obviously, a lot of work to do to get there, but that's our goal.